Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Parish. Before Mass begins, we ask that you please turn off or silence all cell phones. The entrance hymn can be found in the Missal, number 269, to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, number 269, and please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe. Grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, and Pope Pius XI instituted this feast in the year 1925, right after World War I. This, of course, was a time in history when atheistic communism and socialism was spreading, and nations were starting to establish themselves without any reference to God. This was a time of much conflict between nations, and Pope Pius XI was making a statement by instituting this specific feast, and he gave a specific interpretation as to why there was so much conflict in the world. In his encyclical on the Feast of Christ the King, Pius XI said, these manifold evils in the world were due to the fact that the majority of men had thrust Jesus Christ and his holy law out of their lives. And as long as individuals and states refused to submit to the rule of our Savior, there would be no really hopeful prospect of a lasting peace among nations. 
Men must look for the peace of Christ in the kingdom of Christ. That peace could not be more effectually restored nor fixed upon a firmer basis than through the restoration of the empire of our Lord. And for ourselves in our own day and time, we too are witnessing conflicts among nations, conflicts within nations, conflicts among political leaders, and distrust among those in authority. But this feast reminds us that over and above all human institutions, over and above all political and national powers, over and above every government and authority in the world, there is still only one who is sovereign and reigning over all, that is the authority of Christ the King. But although Christ is a king with absolute dominion and power, he does not rule with force, intimidation, or coercion. The king that we worship and adore on this solemnity is a king who rules by his divine love. And we see his divine love in the gospel this morning. Christ the king, although he held absolute authority over Pilate, willingly subject himself to the condemnation of the Jews, and the Roman authorities. He did this because in Jesus Christ we have a very different kind of king. Jesus had compassion on all of humanity. He willingly chose to reverse the downward spiral of sin which humanity was in. And in order to bring us peace, he offered his life as a sacrifice for our sins. Jesus reversed the disobedience of our first parents by being obedient to the Father. Jesus offered himself out of love for us so that we might not be terrified of his grandeur and power, but so that we might love him in return, that we might not serve him out of fear or compulsion, but that we might serve him out of love. Jesus lowered himself and humbled himself and offered himself in order to gain entrance into our hearts and to win over our hearts. And it is from human hearts which the Lord desires to reign in the world. Jesus Christ is a king who desires to be united with us. And if we are united with him, then we too will share in his kingly status and his kingly mission. But the first step is to allow Jesus to rule within ourselves, for him to rule in our mind, heart, and soul, our body, our imaginations, our passions, and emotions, for Christ the King to take possession of all that we have and all that we are. If Christ is the, the king of our mind, heart, soul, and body, then this allows his kingdom to be present on this earth. We are then allowing him to rule in our lives, at our workplace, in our homes, in our family, all of which can even reach into our culture and our society. Allowing Christ to reign in our souls is to share in his kingship and his kingly mission. Through the grace of Christ the King, may we be empowered by his same spirit of charity to look out for others, to serve others, to build up and care for others, to be a source of healing and peace for others. And by inviting Christ into our lives, may we experience his abiding peace, which only he can give. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He entered into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. As we acknowledge Christ to be our Lord and King, let us offer our prayers and petitions to our loving and merciful Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may they be renewed in their ministry of faithful service to God's kingdom here on earth. We pray to the Lord. For all those who exercise civil authority, may they acknowledge and promote the reign of Christ the King by governing injustice and truth. We pray to the Lord. For all of us in our parish community, may we proclaim the message of God's kingdom of love and grace by courageously living our faith. We pray to the Lord. For all who are sick or suffering, especially Anuli Castillo, Nel Solozano, Alan Bear. Amparo Lopera Giraldo, Ayumi Miraz, Doug Payan, William Laslovich. May they receive the blessings of healing and strength from Christ our King. We pray to the Lord. For all of our deceased relatives and friends, especially Emilia Silva, Rudy Aguilar, Sr., Dan Cahill, Larry Dubilis, and Luminada Flores, may they enter into the joy and peace of eternal life in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For all the intentions submitted to our St. John's Prayer Line Ministries, and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray also for Sister Mary John and the Norbertine nuns, the intention of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear Loving Father, you have given all authority to your Son, Jesus Christ, whom we acclaim as our Lord and King. Help us to be loyal servants and be pleased with these prayers we offer to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn can be found in the Missal, number 176. Jesus, the very thought of thee, number 176.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son Himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as the eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, 
he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim you to the Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with His Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us our but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
The first communion hymn can be found in the hymnal number 852, The King of Love, number 852.
Let us pray. Having received the, fe- the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. This coming Thursday is, of course, the Thanksgiving holiday. Our special schedule will be morning adoration in the church at 7.45 a.m., followed by the one and only Mass of the day at 9 a.m. We will not have afternoon adoration or any other prayers and Masses on Thursday. The parish office will be closed both Thursday and Friday. Friday, we will not have a 6.30 a.m. Mass. Beginning with the 8.30 a.m. Mass, the rest of the day, the Friday, will be the regular schedule. There will be no morning confessions next Saturday after the 8 a.m. Mass. Please check the bulletin on our parish website for other announcements and information as well. And there are beautiful... Beautiful decorative metal crosses are available at the table outside the church this morning. A portion of the proceeds will support the parish. And our pastor, Father Augustine, has a special announcement for us. Thank you, Father Ryan. Good morning, everyone. I do just want to mention the crosses, very beautiful. They are designed by one of our parishioners, who is the gentleman there at the table. You can meet him. He's a good friend, Andres really beautiful. They're handcrafted in Mexico, high quality, beautiful, beautiful metal crosses, decorative, indoor, outdoor, wherever you'd like to place them, make a great gift. All right, I am here this morning to give us a little update in regard to our stewardship efforts. The first word, as always, is thank you. Thank you, thank you for your very generous support for the parish and school. We know this past year has been very difficult, many hardships. You have been amazing in regard to your financial support for the parish and schools. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, everyone in the school administration, the parish as well. The news has been very good. You've been doing great Sunday collections, sustaining a very high level of generosity. We thank you for that. Recently, we had two wonderful events, very successful. Our parish festival back in October did great. Thank you for that. The school's gala dinner just a few weeks ago, did really, really well, so thank you for your amazing generosity, especially in these difficult times. So the news is really good. The last appeal for this calendar year of 2021 is our annual PSA. That explains the brochures which are there in the pews. Again, this is sort of the old-fashioned printed brochure with the attached envelope. PSA, as a reminder, or for those of you who don't know, this is the annual fundraising to support both the diocese and the parish. So the diocese assigns us an assessment goal, which this year is $100,000. Everything that we raise over and above that $100,000 stays here at the parish for our own needs and for our own projects and programs. So the good news is we are already at $75,000 in terms of donations. So for all of you who have already made your pledge and payment, thank you so much. All right, so now, from now until the end of the calendar year, December 31st, we have the time to give our last donations for the PSA. So we're at $75,000. To put that into context, last year we finished at over $150,000. You were very, very generous. So we always expect and plan for a strong finish at the end of the calendar year. So we're at $75,000, and that gives us $25,000 to meet the goal. And then, of course, everything above and beyond that will be used here for the parish. So... The envelopes are attached to the brochure. This is an all-in-one. It has the information and everything that you need. For those of you who are computer savvy, and of course we know that that number is increasing daily, you can go to the parish website. The parish website has the direct link to the pastoral services appeal. So you can go to the parish website, use the link provided there. Or for those of you who are really high-tech and fancy, You can take out your phone, not right now, but after Mass, you can take out your phone and scan this little square code here, 
and that will take you directly to the pastoral services appeal on your phone. So just, you know, don't even need like to sit down at a computer anymore these days, right? You could be, you know, at a coffee shop, you could be in your car, wherever you are. Just scan the code, that will take you to the PSA. So uh, again, our faith, our future, that is the theme this year. And our faith is strong here. And our future is bright here, and that is thanks to you and your great generosity. So again, thank you for all of you who have made your contributions again until the end of the year. Uh, final uh, push for this year's PSA. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Please rise. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruined souls.